How's it going, Dopamon fans? If you've been following along on the channel, you know we've been covering the Olympic rosters being announced, but today, I want to make a prediction. Canada's Olympic hockey roster hasn't been announced yet, but there have been a ton of rumors, so I wanted to get my own mock roster out there before the official one gets announced. And uh, of course, if you like this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe. We have a lot, a lot more Olympic hockey content to talk about coming up, so uh, stick around. Uh, the biggest rumor out there right now is uh, from Scott Wheeler of The Athletic, who has this long list I have on the left, and then a confirmed list I have here on the right. Some of the AHL players listed, like uh, Peyton Krebs and Michael Delzato, are on NHL contracts, but if, uh, you know they're in the AHL right now because uh, they either don't have to or have cleared waivers, so I'm not sure if they're actually eligible being NHL, you know, having NHL contracts, uh, all of the AHL players in my predictions aren't signed to NHL contracts. Uh, and also, the other big rumor is from Darren Dreger from TSN, who supposedly confirmed the goalies. I don't like to put too much stock into rumors, they're never 100% uh, accurate. So, here we go with my own predictions. And uh, the starter I see for Canada, Devin Dubnik. Over 500 NHL games under his belt, he could be one of the most experienced goaltenders in this entire tournament. He's currently on an AHL contract with the Charlotte Checkers, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes AHL affiliate. I'm admittedly not a huge fan of Dubnik. I've said that multiple times on the channel, but I still think it's crazy for him not to be the starter here. And I do like the two goalies that uh, Dreger has supposedly confirmed. Eddie Pascal is a former Atlanta Thrashers uh, uh, draft pick, currently playing for the Loco, uh, Lokomotiv Yaroslav in the KHL. He's currently the best Canadian goaltender outside of North America, in my opinion. Uh, he also played in the Channel 1 Cup in December to represent Canada. Uh, back, uh, it was only two months ago, or a month and a half ago, I mean. And uh, he looked pretty good. So uh, I, I think he could be, you know, represent Canada again. And the third goalie, Matt Tompkins, he's a uh, former Chicago Blackhawks, is drafted by them. Uh, and most recently, he just signed with Frelunda in the SHL after leaving uh, just for this season. He's playing really well right now. And uh, that's, I, I definitely think he's, uh, Dreger might be right on this one. Now my first D pairing. On the left, I have Tyler Watherspoon, and on the right, Maxime Nero. Nero was alternate captain of the last Olympic team back in 2018 in Sochi. Uh, he was also their lead scorer as a defenseman. I feel like he'll play a big role on this team as well. Uh, and then Tyler Watherspoon, who's a second round pick back in 2011, playing for the Utica Comets in the AHL right now, which are the New Jersey Devils uh, minor league affiliate. My second pairing... Uh, I really like this one. Owen Power on the left, and Cody Franson on the right. Of course, Owen Power, first overall pick by the Buffalo Sabres in 2021. He was on the Canadian World Junior team that got cancelled, so I would love to see him represent Canada uh, at the Olympics. He is absolutely killing it with the University of Michigan right now, and uh, I, he's definitely, I think he's NHL ready, so he could be one of the best D in this entire tournament. And on his right, Cody Franson, who's uh, spent a lot of time most recently in the KHL, but now he's back playing in the AHL for the Hershey Bears, uh, and uh, he's a guy with a, a long NHL car uh, career, uh, Lots of experience himself, former Toronto Maple Leaf, former Nashville Predator, uh, and I think that pairing could be a could be a, a really good pairing. I really like this top four. My third pairing is Trevor Murphy and Jason Demers. Demers is signed with the Akbars Kazan in the KHL right now. He just signed so he could get physically prepared for the Olympics, so I definitely think he's going to make it. This is what he's been training for. Uh, signing in the KHL, though, means he can't uh, get signed uh, to the NHL right after, though I feel like at his age, in the mid-30s, he's, he's kind of okay with not playing another game in the NHL. Um, th this might be the end of his career, so uh, I think he's okay with that. And on the left, Trevor Murphy is another guy playing in the KHL right now. He's having maybe the best year of his entire career. I always thought he's a guy that had uh, some NHL potential, but just, you know, 
couldn't get there when he was younger, and you know now that he's playing really well, he's in the final year of his KHL contract, so he could sign a he could sign an NHL contract uh, next season. And my final pair is Joe Morrow and Mark Barbario, both former NHLers currently playing in the KHL. Uh, Morrow was a former first overall pick by the Penguins in 2011, uh, currently playing for the Barsner Sultan, and Barbario had a bit longer career and is currently playing with the Akbars Kazan. They both have a lot of experience, and I think either could slide into the, to the roster here for a game or two. Now on to my forward lines. My first forward line, on the left, Brandon Peary, down the middle, Eric Stahl, and on the right, Corbin Knight. Both Brendan Peary and Eric Stahl are in the AHL right now and could get NHL contracts if they look uh, really good after the Olympics. Uh, both just recently signed, uh, especially if taxi squads are going to become a thing. Uh, and uh, Corbin Knight on the right, he is currently playing for the Avangard Omsk in the KHL right now and is the lead Canadian goal uh, point scorer in the KHL. So I feel like uh, he's going to get a shot here. He's having one of the best uh, seasons of his career, and uh, I'd, I'd like him in the top six. My second line, on the left, I got Daniel Audette, down the middle, Mason McTavish, and on the right, Max Verano. Of course, Mason McTavish, drafted third overall by the Anaheim Ducks in 20, uh, 2021, was on the Canadian World Junior team that got cancelled along with Owen Power, so I would love to see him represent Canada at the Olympics as well. He's already shown uh, that he's NHL ready, so I can't have him outside the top six. On his right, uh, Max Ver uh, Verano is a former Ottawa Senator and is having a career year for Lexans in the SHL right now. He's got a mix of two ways, got a mix of playmaking, he can score. I think he's a good fit for McTavish. And on the left, Daniel Laudette, uh, a former Montreal Canadiens pick. I definitely think he's a guy who's young enough that if he has a really good uh, uh Olympic performance, and considering how well he's playing in the KHL right now, he might get an NHL contract next year. My third line was an easy one to put together. This was the top line at the Channel 1 Cup back in December that I mentioned just a month and a half ago, so I figured I'd just keep them together for the sake of chemistry. On the left, Adam Tambellini playing for Rogel in the SHL. I think he's a really underrated forward who just never got a chance in the NHL. Uh, down the middle, I can see both uh, Jordan Wheel and Philippe May uh, Mayette taking draws. Both are top line centers for their respective KHL teams. And uh, when you're going to bring, you know, a team and, you know, a national team together, especially when NHL players have, you know, aren't allowed to go, I think that chemistry is all that much more important. And having a line that's played together and played pretty well at the Channel One Cup together, I think is incredibly important. And I think that this third line, this pairing could uh, uh, be really, uh, really valuable to, to Team Canada if they're going to get a medal. In my fourth line, I got Daniel Winnick on the left, Brendan Lipsick on the, uh, down the middle, and on the right, Jace Howerluck. Uh, Winnick's a guy I feel was kind of just aged out of the NHL, but he seems to defy the aging process by playing really well, uh, really well right now in the Swiss National League. Uh, he's uh, scoring more than he did last year, he seems to be getting better, and four of his teammates from, from the same team in the National League uh, have already been named to, to different national rosters, so I think it would be cool if he could uh, face against his uh, you know line mates internationally. And down the middle, I have Brendan Lipsick, and on his right, Jace Howerluck, two guys I feel were both young enough and still have that kind of NHL game in them, so maybe this could be their chance to get a, a good look for maybe a contract next year. And my two extra forwards are Chris DiDomenico and Adam Cracknell. Cracknell's a bit older, uh, maybe controversial, but he's still scoring a lot at the AHL level, and I think that uh, when you know at the Olympics, because NHL players aren't going to be there, the level isn't you know the skill level just isn't going to be there, and I think Cracknell can maybe you know play a, a major factor on a roster. And Chris Dominico, uh, he's just been to Canada Spengler uh, Spengler Cup so many times that I feel like I owe it to him to put him here. 
And two big considerations I had for this roster were Caden Gulley playing in the WHL and Kent Johnson playing for the University of Michigan and the NCAA with Owen Power. They were all on that Canadian World Junior team that got cancelled and have incredible talent. So I'd love to see uh, any of them maybe get considered if there's an injury or if somebody doesn't want to go as an alternate. I've heard that Kent Johnson might be an alternate. I definitely think that's a possibility. I think he's kind of on that fringe. Uh, and speaking of injuries, uh, I really wanted to have Josh Hosang on this roster, but it looks like he got injured a few days ago, maybe a concussion, took a late hit to the head, so I'm not sure if he'll be available, and I just left him off entirely. And uh, that just about wraps up my predictions for Team Canada at the 2022 Olympics in Beijing. Thank you so much for watching. If you've seen this whole thing, leave a comment down below with your own predictions. And uh, of course, leave a like and subscribe to keep up with more hockey content. I'd love to know what you guys have to say about this roster. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.